Two new arrivals at Chandwell. The completion of some detailing that I've been putting off for months. Starting a new building and also talking about what I'm going to do by this time next year. And here's a look at what I've been up to on Chandwell in December. After I finished the weir scene, I thought it was about time that I started to add some missing details that I've been putting off for months. So I finally got round to adding the missing handrails off the girder bridge, tidying up the TNC bakery, and at long last I've completed the ballast on the viaduct and weathered it. So let's take a look at what I was up to in December. If you're of a nervous disposition, look away now, because I paid no heed to protecting my points at all, and the viaduct is mainly made up of points. Follow a standard technique, I basically pour ballast all over the place using a small soft brush from a child's paint set and gently brush all the ballast until it's clear of the track, it's nice and flat. Once it's laying how I want it, I use a mix of PVA glue and water in about 50-50 and a little bit of washing up liquid just to reduce the surface tension as well. I use an empty spray can of Miracle Hair Insurance leave-in conditioner and I use this because it's such a fine spray. I spray water mixed with a little bit of washing up liquid very liberally all over the track. My viaduct made of card and paper is very very well varnished but I do use a little bit of toilet paper to soak up the excess. Using a pipette I absolutely douse the track, all of the ballast, in the glue. I really go over the top here, it takes a, it takes a day or so to dry. I put a little bit of card in the point blades just to stop them gluing together. Once this is done, I touch up any missing bits of brown paint off the track sides and then I start to weather the ballast. It's dry at this point. I dry brush a little bit of black around the point blades just to represent some deposits of oil and, and various dirty build up and that kind of thing. But then I use my main technique. I add brown paint and a little bit more water to the glue mixture. So this is paint, water and glue and essentially just drip this all over the place. It doesn't make a big difference the first coat but by coats 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 you eventually get a built up dirty appearance which really starts to make the track look good. It's subtle but it makes the whole thing look dirty and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I put some shrubbery on there and I glue this down with the same brown paint mix. This dulls down the green and it ties it all together to make it look as though it's one dirty hole. Once it's dry, and it took about six days to dry properly, it's starting to look just how I wanted it. I'm really pleased with how the track's turned out. I've never tried to do weathering of track before. I thought I'd need an airbrush, but it turns out that you don't, and I'm really pleased with the result that I've managed to achieve. I had thought the TNC Bakery was complete, but it wasn't until I re-watched my last video about my layout's top 20 that I noticed the roof line is particularly scruffy and the back door is floating about two feet up in the air because the building is built into the hillside. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time to sort that out. I made three steps out of one millimetre card and basically just glued them into place. I painted them and weathered them and it looks as though they've been there all the time. I used the Valhario Israeli Sand Surface Primer. It's an almost perfect match for the scale scene stonework. I made a soffit out of half millimetre card and then painted in the edges of this with a green pen. It's not the same shade as the green on the front, but it just fools the eye into making it seem like a solid piece of wood. It's quite small, so with care, I managed to glue this and its other one on the other side onto the side of the building. I adjust it quite a lot until it looks right by eye. It doesn't really bear close inspection, but from a normal viewing angle on the layout, it really has improved the side of the bakery. One of the first things that I made on Chandwell, this railing has been like this for well over a year. I only added the one and I made a right mess on this left hand side. I didn't finish it off properly. So I thought it's high time that I added the missing railings and fix this one. I'm using these railings, they're etched brass from N Brass Locos. 
They're a really good colour actually. They're already kind of the silver colour, so I'm just going to put them on without painting. They also happen to be the exact right width for the two girders. There's a wider one for the wider bridge at the back, and there's a narrower one for the narrower bridge at the front. Basically just used it by eye. I drilled an initial hole with my pin vise. I think it's about a quarter of a millimetre drill bit. I'm actually drilling into a piece of card that's only as wide as two bits of cornflake packet glued back to back. It's got to be quite accurate. But I got them all in there. I haven't glued it in place. I've just slotted each of the railings into their holes and it's really improved the look of the bridge. If you watched my 20 highlights of 2020 video last time, you'll realise that I haven't quite decided what to call the river yet. I quite like the idea of calling it the Chand, but it doesn't quite sound right. So I thought, since you helped me name Iron Bridge Works so well, I'd throw it open again. Please, in the comments below, what should I call the river that runs through Chandwell? Any suggestion that's not too ridiculous, I will put into a hat and we'll choose a winner for my next monthly update at the end of January. So please, what are we going to call this river? December also saw two new arrivals at Chandwell. One that I've had on order since May finally turned up, and the second was a nice surprise on Christmas morning. The first is this wonderful Farish Blue Class 31. It's been weathered heavily by TMC, along with its rake of Mark I carriages. I ordered this because I have very fond memories of travelling on these trains on the Settle and Carlisle line every summer as a child. And looking at this now, I can almost still smell the interior of those coaches as we went through that wonderful landscape. It's an excellent model, very wonderful control, runs beautifully smoothly and slowly when I need to, and it actually navigates perfectly the pointwork of my newly ballasted and weathered track. I always thought I was missing some freight on Chandwell, and this petroleum livery Class 31, again heavily weathered by TMC, really suits it. It looks wonderful trundling across the viaduct here. I imagine it will come through King Edward's Tunnel and run round the train in the station before going off through Stanley Tunnel down to Pig Hill and the depot that's down there. It's a nice little excuse to run a freight train into the turbinus at Chandwell and I think it really suits the layout. Really pleased with the tanks. Might get one or two more if they, have, if they come out in different liveries in future. But for now, I'm really, really happy with this train. So on to plans for 2021. If 2020 was the completion of the viaduct, I think that worked quite well. So for 2021, I'm going to concentrate on the other end of the layout, down at the station. This time next year, I want the entire back of this element behind the platforms to be complete, as well as the beginnings of the station buildings at the far right. I want it to be industrial and made up of a complex of many different buildings. I don't just want one big building. Having said that, I'm quite taken by the big works building at the back of Doncaster Station, if you've ever seen that. My biggest question though at the moment is whether or not to have an overall roof on the station. I did want one big roof, either all the way along the platforms or a half or maybe a quarter of the way along. But I don't know how they will join onto the industrial buildings at the other side. I'm imagining something a little bit like Glasgow, um, but I don't know yet. Um, so if you've got any suggestions of how I can marry the industrial buildings with the overall roof without using too much space, then I'd be happy to have any suggestions for that as well. I'm going to use some kind of forced perspective and layering technique for the buildings behind the station. Um, and as we go through 2021, hopefully I'll have lots of interesting things to show. And, and as, as ever, your encouragement and your suggestions and ideas really really help me so please if you've got any ideas for what I should do with the station area please drop them in the comments below and let me know
I introduced in the beginning of my last video the Weir pub, which at that point I'd just mocked up out of cereal packet. I've been busy working on the pub all through December and I'm about halfway done. I think it's going to look brilliant. It's based upon a prototype called the New Beehive in Bradford and it's going to suit this part of the layout very nicely. Thank you to everyone who suggested that I put a pub on this odd shaped patch of land. I think that's a great idea. I think it's going to work really nicely. My next video in two weeks time will hopefully show the completion of the weir and show you how I made it. As ever, I'm making out of card. If you want to see the weir and if you want to see the continued evolution of Chandwell, especially the station end, all through next year, please subscribe if you haven't done already. 2020 has been an awful year for so many people and I hope that 2021 things are going to start getting better. Whatever, best wishes for the season and I'll see you next year.